Extinction Rebellion. The clowns who try to convince us the end of the world is nigh are at it again, this time outside the headquarters of News UK, bravely protesting the reporting of the current heat wave. The coverage <laughs> they're up in arms about? These media outlets are downplaying the crisis and showing people frolicking around on the beach and children eating ice cream instead of explaining to people how this heat wave is linked to climate change. How dare <laughs> the papers publish pictures of people frolicking, James, in the water, Caleb, when such devastation is on our doorstep. Joining us now is uh, to discuss this insanity is uh, broadcaster Sophie Cochran. Sophie Thank you for your time. Um, has the entire population of the UK lost its ever-loving mind? Because I am seeing such unbridled hysteria over a hot week. It's summer over there, after all. You know what? Th that woman said, you know, they're not bringing it up and up. Excuse me, the papers were literally saying that 10,000 people are going to die. Like, I don't mean to be that guy, but I'm ginger and I'm still alive. So... <laughs> 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 the ultimate thing is, they were telling us around about 10,000 people were going to die in this heat wave. The number that did was 13. And those people that died, died in open water. They got into trouble in open water and drowned. That happens every single year. Very sad, yes, but it is not something that is a catalyst. So that's of not a heat-related heat death, is it? That's not a heat... No, a, dr no. a drown... Are we going to so, start listing drownings <laughs> as, as global warming deaths, Jay? Yes, yes, we are, Lita. <laughs> OK. Yeah. I'm surprised no-one's got long heat wave yet, but anyway, <laughs> they were saying around about... You know, there were only 9,000 odd deaths off. I mean, it, you know, only 99% wrong. It was pretty close. But how many times, seriously, and it counts with COVID as well, are the experts going to get it wrong? And so catastrophically wrong. I mean, they, it wasn't a small margin of error, let's be honest. And we're going to listen to them and allow them to take control of our lives and, and allow us to scaremonger. How, how many times are these experts, how many times do they get it wrong before we figure out perhaps they're not actually experts anymore? And we're ignoring, you know, the physical science that is in front of us, the fact that only 13 people died, and going after these numbers of absolute lunacy. I mean, it's summer, it's hot. But according to these people, if it rains, climate change. If it snows, climate change. Bit windy, climate change. Storming, climate change. Bit of sun in the summer climate change they just don't stop and it, it's it, to be honest it's just ridiculous our killer heat wave lasted two days it's been raining up here ever since we're back to britain you know <laughs> <laughs> well i mean show me you know I, I have to ask because i've actually followed the british coverage and i didn't think anybody was playing it down at all it seemed oh. like it was actually quite over the top and i was reading headlines from the uk the other evening here in sydney and i googled temperature in london and it said it was 22 degrees and it was 11 o'clock in the morning. So, like, you know, this is clearly just, you know, a bit of summer heat. What, though, do the people who are calling on this to be turned into a massive emergency, what do they actually want? How do they want people, society, the economy to respond? What do they want Britain to become? Same they want plan. us to go down their. They want us to go down their route of green communism. And you, you said about the media. If you look at the weather forecasts, we were mirroring weather forecasts from you know back in the 70s to now. And the back in the 70s, the whole thing was green and it was like similar temperatures. Now the whole thing's like bright red, like apocalyptic red. <laughs> we're on fire. Well, they're trying to scare people. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to scare people in, into adopting their green agenda. But the thing is. You know, Prince Harry's been all over it, our lovely Prince Harry, has been all over it in the UN. People like Prince Harry, Prince Harry doesn't care about climate change when it comes to his private jet. Joe Biden doesn't care about climate change when it comes to his car convoys. The entire governments of the world didn't care about climate change and the environment when they were littering our seas with thousands, of, well, not even thousands, millions upon millions of plastic test strips and masks. But God forbid I want to go on holiday to Benidorm once a year if I'm lucky. God forbid I want to drive to work or God forbid we want to heat our time tiny, tiny little homes, all of a sudden, they care. The problem with this is that this entire agenda that they want us to adopt, all it does is make the poor poorer and the rich richer. So they have to use fear to nudge people and to encourage people into accepting this policy, because ultimately, all of these policies do 
is punish the people who are the least responsible for climate change. You cannot tell me that all of these politicians that flew into Davos with their private jets and then got helicopters, I am in any way nearly as responsible as them, because if I'm very lucky, I might be able to go on holiday every once in two years if they don't lock me down in my own country. Like, I'm not going to be made to feel guilty about those things. And that is what they're trying to, to let us do and we won't have it we know that I'm, I'm feeling it myself like I, I can't heat my own home and things like that because things are, energy bills are so expensive and they're using this fear to try and persuade people that this is what we need to solve it and in actual fact it isn't at all but that's the only way that you're really going to go about doing it we've seen these massive fires and all of the media have been saying oh climate change is causing these fires they were arson. The, the fire brigades were literally saying people were setting it on fire themselves. The earth just doesn't spontaneously combust as soon as it hits 30 degrees. Otherwise, pretty much half the world well, will be gone. It's, it's like people have never seen a house fire before. But people are addicted to this fear porn, though. I mean, you know, the media has to, has to take responsibility for putting it out there. But it's like people want to read it. They want to feel like the world is falling apart. That's how they get away with pushing this nonsense. Yeah, and we've seen, you know, we, I draw a lot of parallels with this, with this heat wave to COVID because they did the unbelievable, ridiculous predictions in COVID. They were about 90% wrong on the, those predictions as well. But we were having schools were shut in, trains were shut in, works were shut in. We effectively went into lockdown almost for two days. So... The, the media has become obsessed. First we had COVID, then we had monkeypox, then we have heatwave. Now we're back to monkeypox. Brilliant. Like, we're just obsessed with this cycle of doom-mongering and how the whole world's going to end. But they've been telling us the whole world is going to end forever. I remember Gordon Brown in 2008 was saying, you know, we've got 60 years to save the planet. We're all still here, unfortunately. So it obviously didn't come true. <clears throat> Ah, oh, Sophie, Sophie, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it as always. And uh, you're a ginger, but you've managed to survive. So I think that says it all because... Uh, Hallelujah, a ginger, praise but not Jesus. A ginger, but not a winter. Good on you. We prefer you to Prince Harry any day of the week.